The value of partnership, the value of working together, it's one of the things that Richard and I, our next speaker, have identified. We realised that we had so much in common with our co-workers in the vehicle recovery sector. The same tragedies that we faced with tyre technicians being killed and seriously injured at the roadside are faced daily by our colleagues within the vehicle recovery sector. The same passion that Martin has spoken about in terms of our forefathers, you will see in Richard, the Chairman of the Professional Recovery Operators Federation. So please welcome Richard Goddard to the stage. Thanks for that introduction, Stefan. And can I also thank Stefan for reaching out to the Federation and to the campaign when he heard about it. You've got an excellent Chief Executive in Stefan. He's proactive, he's receptive, and it's been a pleasure working with him in the last six or seven months, and I look forward to working very closely with him in the future. I think if Stefan and I had been uh, sorting out Brexit, we'd have sorted it by now and be in China doing a deal. So, thanks Stefan. Um, so, it's an honour to be here amongst yourselves. Um, I'm not sure about Birmingham, um, but it's great to be here, finally. In um, 2016, I was part of the Government Select Committee to discuss road safety, to discuss smart motorways. And one of the things that struck me straight away was the fact that they never mentioned our industries. Our industries don't seem to matter. At that Select Committee meeting, I laid out some staunch ground rules about the safety of us. As rescue recovery industry, I didn't really know about your industry then, so I'm sorry, but about the fact that it was not safe for us to operate on their highways. The Select Committee actually came back about Smart Motorways and endorsed some of the points that I've made, especially about Red X's. However, Smart Motorways are being rolled out, everything that's happening on the motorways continues to happen and in 2017 in August, September, October we lost an operator killed at the roadside because someone couldn't see him, he was badly protected and the red lights to make us more visible still was a bone of contention and never, never accepted by the highways, the police and the government agencies. It was then I decided that enough was enough. So I decided to start the campaign for safer roadside rescue and recovery. Visibility, you can give our operatives all the training that, that you need. And the more training, the better. Good training gets good operatives, gets good products, gets good brand. Training is like apple pie and mum. Got to have it. But if the field we're sending them out to with that training isn't a level playing field, then something needs to be done about it. So I started the campaign for safer roadside rescue and recovery. Um, one of the poster people of that campaign, I'm not sure if Sam's here today, but Sam Cockrell, she lost her partner, tragically killed at the side of the road. And the death is bad enough, but the effect that it has on the companies. If any company here has ever lost an operative at the side of the road, you've not just lost an operative, you've lost part of your family and part of your company. And that, if, if someone fighting in Afghanistan, a soldier fighting in Afghanistan is killed, it's on the six o'clock news, rightly so. But what about us? Why shouldn't we be safe? Why shouldn't it be news if one of us gets killed? So I started that campaign, but I also know, knew that we needed to have government recognition. We needed the government to understand what we were going through. We needed highways to understand what we were going through. And my industry isn't as well looked after as yours. We didn't have an NTDA. We had a banana republic, if I'm honest. So we needed a route into government, so I decided that we needed an all-parliamentary party group and we needed someone to sort that out for us. So the campaign started, we formed an all-parliamentary party group 
and I'd like to now show you a video of what, how it started, where we are, and summarise from there. So if you could run the video, please. People just don't pay any attention no. to amber lights. All we want is the red light that flashes. I think it's a very simple but effective measure that Parliament can introduce, and I think it should do so. What's stopping us? Bureaucracy? Committees? If it can save a life, let's do it, and let's do it as soon as we can. Red lights are proven to be that much safer, that people detect them earlier, move away, move out of the danger zone, and that's what we're hoping to, uh, to deliver with this campaign. It's a very dangerous job, and unfortunately we see the hard side of it, because after the incident, it's us that has to go around and beat the widow. It's a bit of a no-brainer, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's, it's really important for drivers to be able to immediately be alerted to a potential hazard. They feel unsafe at the moment, uh, so we need to give them the protection that they deserve and that they require. I think this is a, a double measure. It protects the people who are doing the hard work at the side of the road whenever there is a recovery or breakdown, but it also protects other road users who are driving past, could be in the vicinity of an accident, and they're properly warned to slow down. It's critically important people can see the red lights coming and it's, it's, it's in a constituency like mine which is rural, it's especially important with the windy lanes and so forth. Look, the government has a responsibility to make sure that everybody that works on the roadside is safe and that everybody has a, you know, a safe working environment, that's why these lights have to be in place. Anything that highlights that danger is, is to be welcomed. We've had MPs come from Northern Ireland, we've had MPs from Wales, we've had cross-party politics come in and everybody to a man and a woman has been staunchly behind the campaign for red lights, for rescue and recovery operators, for VROs, our safety and the safety of the public that we're serving. It seems to me that it's entirely sensible uh, that we look at measures to reduce the numbers of people uh, working in the, the roadside recovery industry who are killed or seriously injured, of course we want that to be zero. If there's something that we can do, there has to be a very good reason uh, if the government aren't prepared to take action. Campaign for safer roadside rescue and recovery. A group that has provided a united voice within the roadside recovery industry to lobby both government and Highways England to improve safety for roadside recovery operators. The campaign is calling for greater recognition of the dangers faced by roadside recovery operators, identifying four key areas that could prevent further fatalities in the future. The campaign is calling for a halt to the current rollout of smart motorways until Highways England can prove they are safe. For the Department for Transport to collect data on the number of accidents specifically involving roadside recovery workers and to provide greater understanding of the problem. And following the success of the Slow Down Move Over UK campaign calls for a change to the highway code that make clear to road users what to do when approaching a breakdown. This has been implemented in all 50 states in the US, treating drivers who disobey the safety rules of the road the same as drunk or reckless drivers. And we wish to now, in light of the work of this campaign, my honourable friends, uh, the APPG, uh, and others, um, we will carry out a review of the available evidence on the subject of red flashing lights and to provide advice. We'll seek advice on whether a more flexible approach might be 
appropriate. I think that is the uh, principal wish of my honourable friends, and uh, uh, that is something that um, we can agree to. I'm immensely proud of the progress that um, we've made in the short time. We launched the campaign exactly a year ago last week at the Professional Recovery Toe Show in Telford. And to have already set up an all-parliamentary group, to have had a national campaign for the media, to have other people join the campaign, like your good selves, is, is a watershed moment in the recovery industry. But it's still not enough because there are still powers that be. We've managed to get um, the police on side now and the police don't object to us having red lights. And we've got to a point where, as you see, we, which is exactly what we wanted, there is a review and we're very hopeful of it. And I'm constantly asking the questions and so should you people. Because we want red lights, not just for us, we believe that you should have them as well. I pass your technicians, I see them, and they're as brave and as hard-working as we are. And you provide an essential emergency service, as do we, to all the road users. And without you and without us, this country would grind to a halt. But with you and with us, government will take notice of the plight that we endure 24 hours a day seven days a week, 365 days a year. We are out there keeping those roads clear and keeping them safe. And I ask this question. If highways officers need red lights to make them visible, why should they be safer than you? And why should they be safer than us? Quite often you'll see a lane blocked to keep council workers safe picking up litter. And rightly so. They should be as safe as us. But why aren't we, why aren't our industries afforded the same contingencies as them? And together, the Federation, the Professional Recovery Operators Federation, has now federated the industry. We've brought in trainers, we've brought in the IVR, who you work closely with yourselves and react. We've brought in our work providers, because our customers, their members are just as important brought in the bodybuilders, brought in other VROs, and together, as a federation, we are now the secretariat for the All-Parliamentary Party Group. And with the great work that Sir Mike Penny and Tracy Crouch, who you saw on there, taking our plight to government, we have now succeeded in getting to the Secretary, Secretary of State for Transport, which is something we never thought this industry would ever get. It was all we could do to get a council, a local council, someone to come to one of our meetings. I was trying to get um, the Secretary of State to Transport to come to our to the Toe Show last last week, which is our national conference, the same as yours. Unfortunately, Parliament was brought back and he couldn't make it. But he very kindly did something that meant a lot to our industry and sent the video that isn't probably relevant to this conference, but it's relevant to where the campaign has got to and the powers that it's got to. So if you could play the second video, please. I'm sorry that ministerial business prevents me from being with you today in Telford at your annual gathering. I'd like to take this opportunity by video to say that I and my colleagues right the way across government have become increasingly aware of the enormous contribution the rescue and recovery uh, industry makes to road safety and to our economy by helping to keep our roads moving. Under the tremendous chairmanship of Sir Mike Penning MP, the recently formed all-party parliamentary group on safer roadside rescue and recovery has been unstinting in highlighting your concerns and bringing them to the attention of the government. I know the likes of the AA, RAC and Green Flag are the household names for your industry, but I'm particularly aware of the vital role that the 600 or so independent operators play across the length and breadth of the UK. You're the backbone of the industry and you do your job often in difficult circumstances with great professionalism. 
to the stranded motorists you rescue, you are in a very real sense the fourth emergency service. The recently formed Professional Recovery Operators Federation is playing a vital role in informing the work of the APPG and I understand you're pressing for the right to use red flashing lights when attending incidents. I've got a high degree of sympathy with the view and I've asked my colleagues uh, to review the evidence and report back to me. I'm also aware of your concern about smart and all-lane running motorways in terms of safety. I know that the all-party parliamentary group are part way through an inquiry that's looking into these issues. So you can rest assured the government values your role and we are listening and we want to work with you to improve future safety. So thank you very much and have a great day at the conference. So is it the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning? I think it's the latter. That's been a watershed moment in the recovery industry because we've never had a voice, but that's been our fault. But now the campaign and the Professional Recovery Operators Federation gives us that voice. The previous speaker, your, your chairman, mentioned your founder saying about partnerships and solidarity. Well, that's where our beginning is, because that's what we need. Our industries should be working closer together, should be lobbying closer together. And we actually are now. Stefan has accompanied me on many occasions, and he was at the evidence hearing for our all-parliamentary party group. And as you can see, he was at the letter signing. Um, we've got 42 MPs now back in it. I've got more MPs now than Jeremy Corbyn, that agree with us. So... The progress that we've made and where we are now has been not just down to my work, but all of the people that you've seen in the videos and the people, some of them are here today. Derek from, the, from Airy, which, are, which represent the recovery workers, and uh, Paul, who runs the, the, the tow show, which I hope many of you will attend and start to attend the same way as we'll be coming to your conferences. We are going to work together and I'm looking forward to that and I thank you for the support that you've given us in the past and I look forward to the continued support that I'm expecting from you. But one of the places that I think we need to work together is, like we've talked about in terms of training, Highways England have a duty of care over where we work and you've heard the Secretary of State for Transport mention smart motorways. We train to keep our operatives safe and then they roll out whatever they want with any, without any prior consultation, without any communication. They call themselves the first responders on, on the motorway. You've got the police, the ambulance um, and the fire brigade and Highways England. I don't know how many of them can fix a puncture on, on a 42 tonner and I don't know how many of them can move them. I know they can't. In 2013, there was a document provided by Highways England, a 64-page document about first responders, and neither of our industries was mentioned once in one paragraph on it. And it's not too strong a word to use. I'm told not to use it, but I'm going to. I think it's contemptible, the way that we're treated. We're an essential emergency service for both of us, and what we do help support the economics of this country, the movement of this country, and the safety of this country. And none of it should be taken lightly, nor will it be. Thank you for listening to me, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Your, your passion oozes through, Richard. It's absolutely fantastic. And I have to say, when we did the uh, evidence uh, session uh, in, in Parliament, uh, I was given a great opportunity to voice the opinion of the commercial tyre side of things. And um, I think what's become apparent to me in, in the various sessions that we've had with politicians is that we knock them, don't we? We're not politicians. I mean, the Brexit situation has caused us all a lot of grief. But the fact of the matter is, they're hardworking, they're passionate, they are interested. At the end of the day, they're people just like all of us. And when you start to share the stories with them 
of tragedies at the roadside and incidents at the roadside and the scary situations our technicians are working in and the conditions that our technicians are working in. And then you share some of the stories about how sometimes Highways England hasn't been supportive uh, of, of what we're trying to achieve. They really get on board. And when they get on board, they're a force to be reckoned with. So thank you for reaching out to us in the way that we reached out to you. And we're proud to be part of PROF.